exciting lineup of speakers and panels covering a diverse range of topics from HR innovation to entrepreneurship and beyond. Without further ado, let's dive into our first segment, which is HR's panel, Unlocking Your Borderless Center. In this segment, we will explore the dynamic landscape of HR, innovation, and career development. Our distinguished panelists bring a wealth of experience and insights into the table. Please join me in welcoming Ramalingara Digaru with a rich background in HR. Ramalingar is founder of Hughes, a company dedicated to building HR departments for SMEs and fostering India's talent pool. Ramalingar's expertise lies in creating and managing HR functions for organizations across various. Yeah, please come on to dress. Uh, a strategic HR leader with over 18 years of experience, Suchelita specializes in technology and finance function and human resources. Dr. Mishra is a qualified professional offering commendable performance and proven results. His expertise spans across talent acquisition, talent management, performance management, organization development, and more. Chitresh Chandrangaru, an invested HR leader, Chitresh brings a drive experience in HR service delivery, operations, talent management, and HR transformation. He is passionate about leveraging technology to modernize and transform HR services. Over to Ramani Karadika. Good morning. Good morning. Nice. I think uh, this is the first uh, session that I'm actually here with the students. Otherwise, mostly this is all. We've been using it for all the startup entrepreneurs, like these many numbers and also the you know typical uh, organizational related uh, meetings that we had. We also had one, one group called The Group, uh, the Hyderabad entrepreneurs. There are about 250 large companies, mid-sized large companies in different domain. We do our sessions here and you, know, you have all these. And for the first time, I would say that I'm actually seeing people who are uh, the future entrepreneurs. Okay, I have only that statement because I would not like to call anybody uh, somebody who is looking for a job and that's a job board, right? Because each one of you have the potential to uh, be your own and create employment for our society. Okay, taking that uh, lead, uh, I'm very fortunate to have you know, my panel members. Uh, each one of them I know in different state of uh, thing. Of course, Charita, we meeting after 15, 16 years. Right? But we are still in touch. I think that's the key. Right? That, that's the key for all of you to be uh, what you want to do in the future. So we're going to talk today about uh, the careers that are no longer bounded by Gachibol. Okay, if you are in IT, you know typically now the mindset is you know you're only Gachibol. Right? Please look at this. I run a business where I employ sixteen hundred people for 200 different companies across the globe who don't have a presence in India. Why I'm actually making this uh, statement to you is that you don't have to work for a company who's existing in this building or that building, right? You can work for any company across the globe. And one of those, you know, basic statistics that I wanted to tell you why this new generation can really look at only this careers uh, are more in terms of the population is depleting in the rest of the world. And our population, we have enough population who can actually fill those slots. So that means that you don't have to look for just a career which is just in India based, but it could be everywhere else. Unlike, you know, the typical Hyderabad, the Telangana or AP guys think about only the US, but there are 190, 95 countries who would also have less population going forward and also you need working population. Okay? One is digital. The other is physical. So I think look at your mindset from that perspective and that is where we are going to drive into how we are going to achieve that success in the future. So with that introduction, I would like to ask my panels, uh, Chitresh to start off, uh, uh, your view about uh, the boundaryless careers. Uh, you know, what is it? Uh, what does that mean to you? I think three of you can answer uh, your point of views. Population or growth rates so the in terms of the other thing is that also because of the advancement in uh, health and, and consciousness in general about health, we're going to see a 
long term career span. Career span used to be 30, 40 years. People used to start planning their retirement at, at our age, probably. But uh, on my age, rather. You know, <laughs> Target everybody together. Uh, but uh, now we are looking at 60, 70 year careers. So you can't be thinking of doing a job for 60, 70 years which will keep you happy and, and actualized. You really have to be job creators versus working for somebody and deriving value out of that. You want to derive value out of your lives, and the only way you can do that is, is you, you take the path of entrepreneurship. And uh, entrepreneurship also I see uh, as a very vast domain today. It's not just about profits. There are non-profits. There are people are motivated and driven by the passion and the skills that they have. And one of the things that I think is very important as we think about borderless careers is moving with the development that is happening in the ecosystem, in the environment. So when I say moving, it's about having the right skills or having the ability to unlearn and learn so that I'm preparing myself, each, each of us, preparing ourselves to take on the next, next career. And when I say career, it includes entrepreneurship. The next career that is, that is going to be the next big thing, whether it is the, the technology advancement that's happening, whether it's AI, or whether it's in the space of uh, you know sports, gaming, whatever we see, lots of changes are happening on a daily basis, and keeping ourselves on the top of the curve with these changes, I think is going to be key, and having the right skills uh, along the line. So those are my initial points. Yeah, great. First of all, uh, very happy to see all the guys because you know, I was excited, you know, we, we never had opportunities like this when we started a career and we don't know what to do. I know, just like that, you know, whatever somebody says, take uh, uh, biology, take somebody says math, somebody says MBA, just take this goes like that. You know, what a pleasure for pay, it's wrong. You know, at least I think uh, the guys have got that uh, uh, conviction, you know, they are very serious about what they want in life. That's very important, it's very good also. You need to know your strengths and uh, uh, there are certain traits, there are a lot of opportunities. Not only in India, everywhere. You, know. and you need to identify, understand your uh, competencies and the skills, and you need to adapt to the situation. Right? It's not necessary that you have to go to the office, you know. This job, that job, every talent has got a job. Take a job. There's nothing like, you may have something, you may think that it's not that significant, but that is also an opportunity. You need to understand what skill set or what competence, what is that you're good at. And there's a lot You need to identify globally there's a lot of potential. Every country, as I said, India, the population is, any population is very high. And they do the talent, uh, the, the quality, and the competency, the creativity you guys have got. <coughs> Amazing. Nobody can beat. But the only thing is discipline, I think that's what which I personally feel is very important. You need to adopt, you need to understand the, the requirement. That's it. And you are the game. You can take it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. It's like a really pleasure to learn with you all today. So thank you for having me here and sharing my perspective. So I also have two teenagers at home. My daughter is doing her bachelor's. And we continue to have this conversation as to what she needs to do. And honestly, it, for me, it was more about when I was her age, it was more about my parents telling me what to do. Uh, but today, it's more about the conversation that we have. And I see that nowadays the youngsters are looking for more diverse experience. Uh, they're looking for a complete ecosystem which would help them create a right balance. And what I would tell all of you is, once you're sure what you want to do, it's very really important that you have that discipline, you're very clear in terms of what you want to do, and it's okay if if you've not made the perfect choice, you can still think about doing something which you're passionate about. And at the same time, like what my colleague over here is saying, that a discipline is very important. No matter what you do, there has to be a routine and discipline which would help you to stay focused. And at the end of the day, it's all about being happy whatever you are doing. 
So mental, physical health is very important because if you are not focused on that, you would never enjoy what you are doing in the companies or as an entrepreneur. Thank you, Mr. Chaitanya. Chaitanya just mentioned about the beautiful little kids. So you know, I remember my uh, daughter who uh, was a sports person and never went to school. And then once she retired from uh, sports at 23, that's when she went to school like undergrad like you. And by then she would have, you know, traveled about 25 countries and all that. And you don't understand what the program that she has taken in the undergrad. She's taken something like uh, international relationships and conflict resolution with uh, Arabic as the one of the language. <laughs> you know, you guys have really the world with you. You know, if you choose to, uh, you know, accept something and what you wanted to do. So, you know, looking at that, uh, um, uh, continuing to uh, talk to Sucharita, you tell us in terms of, because I think uh, all of us wouldn't have started such a global <coughs> in nature kind of a world. But today when we are talking to our uh, students here, uh, we are in a connected global world. Okay, so what is that you think? You know, to be able to survive in this global and interconnected world where the boundaries are really not there because you yourself and Australia and here while sitting here. So what is that kind of skills that are required to be able to adapt to the next connected world, you know, for, for their point of view? Whether you go there and work, 
or you are here, doesn't matter, right? So in this uh, uh, remote kind of a world, dynamics, Jitresh, uh, I would like to know, you know, what is that one need to be prepared uh, if they have to, you know, get to get to the stage? Because students most of the time they are forced to go to the college, right? There is nothing called uh, work from home college, right? So, but when they get to the work, it's going to be work from home or run from anywhere. How do they prepare themselves for such kind of uh, eventualities, I would say. Thanks. Thanks, Jia, for this question. I would like to know, you can't say a surgeon that, you know, a surgeon can't work remotely from home and operate a patient. But then, why in some of these professions which, uh, which are very physical and have to be uh, in person? I think the way, the advent of technology, IT and everything, the way we are moving, uh, remote work, hybrid work, being connected globally, not being sort of restricted by you know space time, those kind of things are for me. They are such an I'll give you a, a simple example. When I joined the team, at that time COVID had struck. And I was anticipating there would be a warm welcome, onboarding sessions, and everything will happen. Uh, of course, none of that happened. And I had a global role with teams sitting in France, Egypt, US, imagine the time zones that I had to manage. And when you are working globally, you have to be very sensitive about the culture of people, because you are hurting lives of people, the way we have been used to managing people, or working with people, or I like to say working with people, collaborating versus managing. It's very different when you have to manage uh, uh, or collaborate with people here. Uh, that's where these strategies and the tactics <coughs> come uh, very handy. I think first and foremost, uh, what helped me was trying to understand uh, the people I was collaborating with, setting up their notes with them, uh, respecting them, being very respectful of their time, culture, the way they were speaking. Uh, there are simple issues that come like, you know, understanding what they're telling, like they used to more UK and US kind of addiction, but when you're talking to somebody in France, uh, it's, it's difficult, right? It becomes more so when you understand that, you know, there are other challenges that a person might be facing. It could be, could be that uh, he's on a garden and then you still have to collaborate and work with him and make sure that all the work is transitioned. So I stuck to some very basic uh, norms and, and, and principles, like I said, about trying to understand them who they are. And being very authentic and candid in front of them, that, you know, what I know what I don't know. But most importantly, believing in myself. And, and uh, humility is another very important thing that, uh, that comes to my mind. Why you should believe in yourself and you should have your strategies uh, to make yourself successful. But being humble is important. Authenticity, candid, humility, all these things are very important. I'm not mentioning all the technology stuff that is there. We all know, I mean, there are dearth of TV and collaboration tools today uh, that and India is, is at the forefront of some of these technologies. You know. uh, for example, we see the rise of companies like Zoom and all at the, at the start, but then they put on teams and everything. So, so those kind of tools and technologies are already there. I more want to focus on the softer aspects which is very Also maintaining a certain rhythm to your life. You need to plan your life in a way that when you are doing a group career, you are working across time zones. You need to plan your life in such a way that you are able to give time to your family also, your parents, you know, or people like us, your children. Uh, and at the same time, you are able to balance your day with regards to the time zones that you I respectful about your time and other other person's time on the other side of the globe as well. It's very okay to say that <coughs> if you see a call pretty late in the night for you, don't hesitate to respectfully say that hey, this is this is too late in the in the evening for me, but you might be still in this call. These are simple tactics that I want to touch upon. But all this will happen if you believe in yourself. It's not a a a play where one is subservient to anybody else. We all are equals collaborating, whether it's a manager or a team member, I don't see that difference. 
So I think those are some of the things <coughs> and roots that I would, I would integrate all of you in the game because all of you are getting global careers on now. I think it's very important also to uh, you know look at how one would have navigated. So you know, I have a question for the panel that you know when they are actually interacting with the global uh, audience and you know their colleagues or their friends, what is the kind of a preparation or what is the kind of a, you know a self plan that you have done when you are interacting with your global you know colleagues? This question is for all three of you. If you can quickly uh, you know uh, do it one by one. Value being derived out of, out of uh, the 
the arrangement, I would say. So that's the way both the parties derive mutual values. And for a period of time, that will be your connection. I don't think meeting somebody over dinner or not just you know, in a large gathering builds a sustainable connection. A sustainable connection happens when you can derive mutual value out of the engagement that that. So that's that's and, and really you you get it. You really enjoy the team. I know you feel you got satisfaction and happy. They're very good. Very good. And a very, very flexible. A very, very uh, helpful support. You know? uh, I think there are a lot of advantages. are easy to navigate the service center. No doubt it is. Feel stress. And there are also people like you can be in a place in the same. The only thing that we do understand. I can guarantee you, you enjoy it. I know that you enjoy it. Yeah, continue to that, I think uh, if, if he's interviewing, probably if you answer a question, uh, the answer, they take it as, you know, you know about it. You know, sometimes, you know, what we do is, whether we know the answer or not, you know, we just uh, give an answer. Or sometimes you just say, do you know this technology? Yes, I know. Means that they take it as, you know, the technology. So that means when you go back, you have to be prepared more because the burden of burden lies in you to prove that you know you know that subject. Not that nobody is going to grill further, you know. Now you know I will prove you wrong, you will prove me wrong, you won't have that. One more thing, like while we are actually talking here, I see a lot of uh, heads, you know, we we nod, right? We nod that we are accepting. And sometimes the biggest challenge with when you're dealing with the you know rest of the world is that they just stand and then look at you, right? You know, in the in the screen. And then you suddenly find, I don't know if this guy have understood or not. We have been told from the beginning that, you know, nod your head. And suddenly, sometimes, we do not more head and then they will feel, you know, get confused. He, you know, what is he trying to do? And sometimes their chain of thoughts also get uh, disrupted. So these are some of the, you know, the minute thing that we would have bothered, right? But those are the nuances that we need to learn, you know, to uh, deal with them. So, I will open up the questions to all the audience, you know, keep your questions ready and uh, we'll have about 15 minutes. But before you all gather your thoughts to ask questions, I have one question for all of them. Now, we all have started careers in 90s or 8, 90s or 2000 years, okay? We are the age-old, ancient, stone age kind of careers we have started. But however, if you have to start your career today, how do you approach is one uh, question that you can answer for yourself. You know, as though you are just sitting in their uh, uh, you know, shoes and then actually trying to answer for yourself. Just your thoughts before they actually have their questions open up to us. Is that okay? Fantastic. Go ahead. Which organizations, uh, which processes, which products, 
or which interest we, your skills have been matched. The luck is nothing but your interest, your competency is matching your organization interest. That's luck. There's nothing beyond luck. We have to plug opportunities. You need to look for who required the type of skill set or who you can so apply your knowledge and skill set. That's very important. Then your job will be easy. Otherwise, you try to act, you try to do something which are not a pseudo, a false, you know, uh, people can label. Right? So whatever is natural, whatever you have, I think you you give us that. Make best to come, best to come back. Look for opportunities where your interest matters. Right? You know, that will give you a lot of satisfaction and happiness. So it's something you can take time to get a right job, but don't give up. Don't do something which you don't like it. Do something which you like it. You will be happy forever, I can guarantee you. No matter if you small start, small, but you have longer, you will enjoy your career, you enjoy your profession, you know, your passion, and you know, have some patience. Don't rush, you know, don't get into the wrong directions. Even if you are in a, uh, go slow, no problem, go in the right direction. That's very important. Okay, that's very starting important stuff. That's a very interesting question. I see it this way. Like I have to reboot and make sure that I have a better software and hardware I can, I can procure at that point in time. But on a more serious note, uh, I feel that uh, uh, generally we tend to, or I, what I did is that we, we go with the flow and, and we go with the the biggest fan that is there. Same company. You are saying one crore of salary job, is it? Is it what you are asking? No, no, no. So I am asking, so I am doing uh, computer clouding and data sets in the same company with one crore. Sorry, I have not understood. Uh, if there is anything you can... 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 Okay. Yes, okay. So, uh, so uh, 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 if you are interested in one role, one company, one person, you can do one company, you can do one company, you can do one role. Oh, okay. If you are interested in one company, you can do one role. So, okay. For you. then you can move in terms of lateral movement. So in that way what happens is over a period of time you also build those technical skills from where you started at A but maybe in 3 or 4 years you will also bring additional te te technical skills based on how that role is evolving. You definitely have those opportunities. It depends on the organization that you are hiring. Uh, good morning, thank you for giving me this opportunity. So, first thing you are saying that the world needs entrepreneurs, you are saying absolutely, that's a great thing. But uh, talking about entrepreneurship, there is so much of risk involved. Right? For example, if I get an idea like spontaneously, there are so many people out there who are implementing it, even implementing the uh, implementing the idea. So, I have like, uh, I'll put, uh, summing up my question. First thing is, how do we cope up number right? Never giving up what we think of and believing strongly in ourselves. So my question goes to this. Tell the answers. Yes, I'll be happy to answer this. Thank you, sir. It's a fantastic uh, subject. Uh, before answering it, I just want to say that uh, do you think that the biggest of stars, you know, the moment I say stars, I think of the Bloomberg and Cody and all. Do you think uh, they have never had set out, they have never had that feeling that whether I'm going to succeed or not? Absolutely. All of them have that feeling. So why they are stars today is that the way they have managed that that feeling of fear unknown whether I succeed or not. I think that's the key to success. So my answer to you would be that you know having a growth mindset is what takes you on the other side. What it means by growth mindset is that you will fail, you will certainly fall down, but in the face of it also, you should be resilient, right? Learn from your failures. Correct some strategies. Sometimes make drastic corrections. So people, people do second start, right? You know, first one doesn't work out. 
it's fine. But then, if if you are going in that, in that and continue to have your traditional mindset that you know I failed once and I'm not going to get into it again, I think it's not the right way. Managing your this is a very important thing. You already have some of those those, those uh, initial uh, things that are required. So understanding this is, is a key thing there because there are risks and you may fail, but despite you should you should continue that path. If that is a passion. That is what we want to cover. Uh, just I wanted to add uh, to that also that if you fail today, what will happen? Nothing. If you are married and you had a startup, if you fail, that's more riskier. Right? So your 50% chance of going, not going is dangerous when you get married. And of course, in like children, if we have, we actually have uh, one more problem, right? So only thing is as long as you don't get addicted to a thing called salary, then you can do any experiments. Okay? I think this is the right time for That's why I think we are addressing to you that you know, think of any craziest idea that you want to pick up and you know, work on, be it working with a startup, working with a global company. I think there is no problem. I mean, it's just just easy for you. Maybe after five years you will not ask this question. Right? <laughs> Thank you. We, we, we being as an individual have different mindset and think idea. But how do we build a team with this? Uh, how to get a team for particular mindset? How to build a team is important. Similarly, once you have an idea, we need to have conviction. I know you do a lot of preparation, you know, and ready for the questions, what they're going to ask. You need to have all the solutions, number one. To influence somebody, we need to have a full clarity. If you don't have clarity, if you don't have conviction, if you're not confident, you cannot convince anybody. Right? First of all, okay, this idea is good idea, great idea. Okay, then look for people who have got a similar type of interest where this idea can be applied, similar mindset, you know, the, the people who are interested in similar fields, so I am interested in some sports fields. Everybody has different personalities, different mindsets, but you're still friends. You're trying to accommodate each other. So it's all about building that inclusive mindset when whether you are in your um, personal relationships with your family, your friends and everybody and when you go into the corporate world, you also learn to work with different people because different people bring in different ideas and that is how you can help in uh, building your skills to collaborate and work together and not everybody can think the way you would think, right? So what you need to do is how are you accepting a different perspective? How are you open to listening to something different which might not be there? Sometimes in these kind of discussions, maybe the concept might start at A with different mindsets, it might just go into much more bigger. So it's more about keeping an open mind, being inclusive and just navigating as to how you're going to communicate and collaborate. Sorry, uh, we don't have much time, but uh, we are around. Catch us up uh, when you have these uh, questions. And of course, uh, Charan will not allow us to be part of student life, which we can't be, but we are on LinkedIn. You know, just make sure that you get connected and you know, we can actually uh, be more, have a longer duration of this conversation than we're doing. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, all of you, for being here and sharing your knowledge uh, and Thank you, all of you. So I say like uh, these are the times where toughest ways to catch hold of your HRs because anyone who wants to meet with us, placements on there. So this is the toughest time where uh, that they are going through also because internal manager, vital business manager, college days keep asking, everyone keeps asking, are you hiring more? What are the skill set? But I wanted to make it more one-to-one -one also because today we will not get an opportunity often to get HR leaders like what we have on the stage and the kind of diversity which we have here, it's like you know, someone from a completely different sector to someone from the IT sector and IT and GR Sarji is like HR of HRs, he has HRs as a human systems, he runs the whole thing. So, please interact. I hope you had a good time. Yes. 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 Go back to your colleges. Tell that if I have skill, I'll get it. I, I, I'll, tell, I'll end with one word. A lot of time, placement is a word which is used for lifeless things. 
placement is a word which is used for lifeless things. We place in that bottle there. Don't expect someone else to place you. You, you move yourself, get things done. You want to think about it? You want to think about it? You want to think about it? Thanks, man. You want to think about it? You want to think about it? मेरे को आप इतना सारा इंटर देख रहे हो कहाँ इंटर हो? तो आप इंटर ही तो आप तो आप तो को आचे पूरे बारे में जैसे ना आप इंटर के ना सारा ना ना एक बार बाय में लास्ट कोड जो लास्ट कोड है सारा ना इंटर में तो ये मैं आपको स्टार्टिंग के लिए सुनाने का सो थैंक यू थैंक्स एवरीवन आई होप दिस वाज so we are like this. Uh, request take a small memento from us. Memento, memento. Memento. You need a t-shirt. You need a t-shirt. Okay, let's let's get one t-shirt. Uh, let's get one t-shirt. Let's get t-shirt. Yeah. If Jr wears a t-shirt on his WhatsApp status, he'll wear the t-shirt and do yoga. And then yoga, our brand will go. We have to endorse. Uh, you know, we have to take us an endorsing So, sir, my, my, my company will be saying, sir, public will do So, thank you, thank you, guys. Uh, so, uh, I request, we have to do this. I don't know, maybe I can do it. Are you ready? Thank you so much. Let's have a relationship with you. Good. I love the silence, it's so good.